for, for plebs, by plebs, dropping the Bitcoin only signal. Pleb underground. Welcome everyone to the Pleb Underground. Pleb Underground, back for another time. Walton here, back with another rhyme. Like my co-host Phil, Lord Flacco is a big hitter. I'm going to keep this one short, like more than half of Bitcoin Twitter. All right, in case you haven't guessed it, that's right. We've got fellow Bitcoiner and Pleb, 10x Flacco is it now? Some people may remember him as Wolfnode. <laughs> that's that that was the name that I met him under on Twitter. Anyways, dude, it is awesome to have you join us on the show. Long overdue, by the way. Yeah, for sure, man. Hey man, thank you very much for having me. It's an honor to have been invited to come and hang out with you guys to do a show. Um let's go, man. Awesome. Thanks. Sweet. All right, all right. So you know, like look, you've you've seen the show before. Yeah. Walton, we are diving into the numbers. Let's do it. Yeah, the numbers, of course, brought to us by timechainstats.com. That's timechainstats.com. And don't forget, for a new way to browse the time chain, check out timechaincalendar.com. That's timechaincalendar.com. At the time of this recording, the block height is 767,713. The Bitcoin price, 16,840. Total public lightning capacity, 5,133.52. Moscow time, 59.38. And the chain rewrite days, 776. Those are the numbers. Not too much, uh, not too much going on with the numbers, but, but we do have... I do have some I, I do have some pretty good numbers that I think we're gonna want to take a look at. I got some bad numbers for us to look at as well. <laughs> <laughs> you, got, you got some good numbers, I got some bad yeah. numbers. All right. So for the numbers, we've got a tweet from Will Clemente. Bitcoin is dead. I don't know. Maybe you could classify this as hopium as well, but I, I'm gonna stick with the numbers and take a look. Again, it's all speculation. Nobody knows, but Kind of start, uh, kind of does start to make a pattern, doesn't it? Totally. Right. <laughs> it does start to make a pattern. Oh gosh, I love to see these things because it does, you know, it does inspire some hopium. And of course, as we all know, Bitcoin is dead. I love to see stuff like that. It's always inspiring. It's always hopeful. How much can we trust it? How much do you guys trust when we see the glass node data? And again, this is a matter of opinion. Everybody has their own opinion. Walton, what are your thoughts on the glass node stuff? I call it glass chode. Glass <laughs> chode. Is that is that is that for for choda or? Uh, n no. I mean, if if you don't know what a chode is, I'm not going to explain it to you okay. to you right now. No. <laughs> okay, perfect. Ten uh, X Flacco, do you know what a chode is? Because I, I I don't. I'm obviously going to have to go look this up after the show. <laughs> So. Well, it's you know, something that looks like a, a tiny mushroom that grows in the uh, forest in Norway. That's all it is. That's what it looks like. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay. <laughs> Very interesting. Okay, so you guys are not fans of the glass node stuff. I don't know if I'm necessarily a fan of the glass node stuff, but it is numbers and it is something that Bitcoiners who do look at, do look at the, we'll say, the traditional legacy finance fundamentals, they like to look at this and they like to extrapolate what's going to happen. Obviously, to me, I look at this and it just helps me feel good. To me, yeah, it's important totally. that the wording's clear because I think what happens is when when words get swapped is is when the the data is being misrepresented and that's that's what i mainly have a problem with when people are talking about oh the number of number of people with this amount of bitcoin um has reached an all-time high when actually it's the number of addresses on the oh, i think they're saying entities is the term they use when it's actually addresses and actually you could have multiple addresses owned by you know one entity um, and similarly, you can have many, many, you know, individuals who are, say, holding their coins on exchange, something they really shouldn't do. But then that that will be maybe under one address. And so it's it's it, a lot of the the wording um, ne needs to be more accurate when they're when they're reporting on this sort of stuff. This is a this is a chart for to dictate the future price or speculation, correct? So no matter how long you stay in Bitcoin. 
right? Like, let's say like a guy like, like me or whatever, I've been through a couple cycles and, you know, I always found that by holding through like the cycles and stuff like that, like every time there's like a having and all that shit, like the supply shock automatically brings it up, no matter what the fuck number that's in there, right? It's automatically always going to bring it up. That's something that I've always found super cool about Bitcoin. It's like, you know, it reduces the supply. People want to, there's still the same amount of buying. So like the, the same amount of buying is always there. So the number is less and it's always going to go up. So NGU technology is fucking works, man. To me anyways, it works. So I, I think you bring up a really good point, right? Because a lot of times people focus on the traders and they focus on the market makers. And what people don't realize is, is that there's more and more hodlers that come to Bitcoin. And these hodlers are taking Bitcoin off of the exchanges, right, as we've seen, and they're self-custodying. So there's less and less of that Bitcoin to be traded, which means there's less and less of it to create that market that a lot of, you know, a lot of Bitcoiners are watching. So I, I think to your point, it, it just helps feed, you know, NGU and possibly it's underappreciated. Because of fractional reserve by nanking, um, the, 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 the ability um for price to be much more manipulated shall we say um it is greater um it's not just a, a kind of linear behavior of um how much people have left on exchanges versus yeah how much how much how much this can kind of move i think it's it's much more significant um you know it, the the greater amount of corn there is on exchanges the more fractional reserve by an anking they can do that's also a very good point and that as well people taking self-sovereignty and kind of get away with it for longer if you sort of mean like if you've got oh, yeah. a decent bit you can um yeah if you're a ponzi scheme right you and you've got um enough kind of flows then it then it works right um yeah i worked I mean, for we're, bernie we're, madoff we're, for 30 we're, years we're, right and we'll get you know we're going to be looking at that a bit more in in wrecked in in a little bit but um yeah some bad numbers for you guys um i'm talking about unemployment um not just in the united states but also uh in the united, in the united kingdom and um across the eu um apparently our spirits are the only people using the word recession um but this is very much what what we're seeing right we're seeing unemployment numbers starting to rise and yeah this this is a, a key indicator of recessions what should we make of these forecasts the the um united states seems slightly more hopeful um the than the united kingdom you can see who are expecting maybe a 50 percent growth in unemployment from four percent to six percent over the next two years what are your question thoughts guys for, question for you walton when a person uh, when a person goes on unemployment and becomes part of that statistic, how long before they get removed from that list and considered? You know, like like um, oh, I, I don't know. know. They change this kind of thing all the time, right? Yeah, like... exactly. So I'm just I'm just what I'm trying to say is is that all we're seeing what you just presented is the is the tip of the iceberg, right? There's there's a whole layer that we're not seeing of people that are no longer classified as unemployed. They're just simply no longer seeking employment maybe or they simply um are unemployable or you know i i'm, I'm not really sure but i i do know that that there's is... also these things like it was only in the uk zero hours contracts so you can be quote unquote, unquote employed but you're only doing six hours a week or something so we have something very similar uh here in the u.s um where an employer um, and this happened to me actually where an employer can furlough you so you're still considered mm -hmm. employed. You're simply not being paid. So this is and oh you, no. So f it, so in you, the you UK also can't work. In the UK, in people quotes. got furloughed and got paid in in the um uh, in the lockdown periods um or or not lockdown, but like it was you know two years ago or whatever. Furloughed in the UK was people being um essentially just sent home on i think it was like 80 percent of their salary or something up to 50 grand like it was it, and, and meanwhile everyone else was just going to work it was bizarre hey at least we have bitcoin yeah you know like bro for me okay i'll be honest with you guys 
no work never existed. Unemployment is a fucking psyop, in my opinion. You just want to be a fat piece of shit, lazy, garbage human being that doesn't want to just collect. Hey, some of them are skinny crackheads. Yeah. <laughs> but you got to try to say, bro, it's the fucking, it's, it's the mindset, right? There's always work, always will be. All you got to do is either get on your car, drive somewhere, take the bus, go to work, pick up the phone, call somebody. There's always work. So for me, unemployment never existed for me. Even during lockdowns, all that shit, right? People were uh, you know, just sitting home, fucking watching Netflix, whatever, fucking jerking off to fucking whatever. And me, yeah, I was out there hustling, fucking making money more than I was making before the fucking uh, lockdowns, right? So to me, unemployment is a complete fucking champ. If you're able to work, you'll always, there'll always be work for you. So this number going up is just people wanting to stay home and collect fucking free money and then want to go live in the fucking VR or like the metaverse or whatever. That's what they want to do. They just want to stay home. That's their choice, right? But it's being incentivized, right? They're being, pay they're yes. being paid to stay at home at, at yeah. a kind of increasing rate. Um, yeah. Uh, again, that's again, not sustainable. Just... It can be. It's impossible. Can't I also... That. I also think that Good something that, that I also think that something that people aren't appreciating is is that a lot of jobs. I mean, uh, Flacco, to your point, right? If, yeah. if you want to be working out there, you can be, um, yes. and you should be. But the reality yes. is, is that so many of these jobs are so crappy and not even worth the money. It's like th yeah. these people are like, you know what? I may as well be staying home, even though that's not necessarily the right attitude. That's true. You know, so it's that's it's true. also it because I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, let, let's be honest, right? Uh, human beings, like, you know, when you were in like grade six and shit and they asked you what you wanted to be, everybody sat there and was like, I want to be an astronaut. I want to be a fireman. <laughs> yeah. I want to be this and that. And then, yeah. you know, 25 years later, you're sitting as a at a bank, you know, or behind a desk and you're literally just doing the same thing over that's and because, over again. So, sorry, bro. That's because, that's because in my opinion, you chose to settle. Right. That's, That's what right. I think. Okay. You could do, you could make fucking millions of dollars. Just if you really just wake up. Okay. I'm going to do this today. My goal is to make a hundred thousand dollars this year. How am I going to make it? And you focus like four or five hours a day. How are you going to make that money? You pick up the phone, you start calling people, you start offering your services, fucking cold call all of America if you have to, and that's how you're going to fucking make your money. Not by going to a bank and sitting behind a fucking desk, right? You offer this. People need to know who you are for them to contact you for you to do the service. Obviously, you got to fix some of their problems. But to me, that's that's what I think, you know, is a value for people who really go out there and, and do that stuff, right? Instead of just Bull fucking, you know. So I think, man, I'm, I'm bullish on your optimism. I like that. I like that. Yeah, message. Man. That's sweet, man. Well, it's good no, totally. advice, though. Find something that annoys people uh, and and make it less annoying for them and work exactly. out how to get paid to do that. Like, it's, it's a... Yeah. That's right. Yeah, the customer, general, right? In, 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 like, there's kind of two things. I mean, to me, to me, yeah, sorting annoyance might be a kind of convenience type business, which is kind of fear to me. Like, um, to, to me, the 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 best businesses, um, the best services, you're essentially selling someone um, a catalyst on on time. Um, yeah. So so either you're paying someone to do something that can do it in uh less time than you can do it and so be be more efficient at it or yeah. they may take uh longer but you earn more per hour doing your fiat work and so there's do you, do you see what I mean? Like you could, yeah. there's, there's kind mm -hmm. of differentials essentially, um, mm -hmm. but but you should, in general, yeah, be looking to to work out how you can um, use time more efficiently than someone else and 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 sell them that. Yeah, um, totally. Yeah, you're saving people time. That's like, I mean, it's a service, right? So, for like, I'm just gonna throw a fast example before we move on here, like. Like fucking boomers and shit, right? That want to do uh, these stupid fucking like NFT deals or whatever, right? Let's just call it shit coin, right? Oh man, I'm too lazy to set up a Discord channel. All these people that are staying home, these kids, they can offer to serve. I'll set up your Discord channel for you. What do you want? Tac, tac, tac. Okay, done. Everything's finished, right? You don't got to fucking do it and you can focus on doing whatever else you want to do, right? So stuff like that, like just time consuming garbage. If you're staying home, might as well help people save time that are out there working, right? It sounds opinion. like it has like 45 steps or something crazy. 52, but it's okay. But still, right? Somebody's yeah, gonna, somebody want, you know what? If somebody <laughs> wants to get paid to do it, they're, they're gonna yeah, get paid to do it. Yeah, exactly. So, you know? Yeah. All right, guys, we are gonna move on over from the numbers into.
the hopium the hopium is brought to you by represent check them out represent ltd.com very nice threads this is the bitcoin branded stuff that they've got going on very nice styles walton <gasps> sporting and disappearing and reappearing he's got the represent going don't forget to check us out we've got a coupon with them pleb dash underground for 10 percent off that's representltd.com. Okay, so for the Hopium, this this couldn't have come at a better time. And you know, while everybody's sitting here focusing on on Bitcoin dying, okay, and 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 it being all over and it's all Wait, horrible. What? Phil, no one told yeah. me Bitcoin's dead. Yeah, Bitcoin's dead. Of course, you, I, you saw the charts and the numbers. I didn't give. I didn't even get invited to the funeral. Fuck's sake, guys! Come on. I showed you it's dead. But look, but look at what happened. All right, here's a tweet from William Kassarin. Here we go. 14 BTC. This guy is an absolute boss. You got you should you should follow him, Phil. Like I follow this guy. He's this guy's this guy made some app called Damus, um, which is the uh, like an iOS app for Nostra, um, oh. which you're now gonna talk about here. But yeah, Jack, I'll 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 let you go. I'll let you go. No, no worries, but look at that. Jack is fast and Bitcoin makes it easy. That's right. This is this is how beautiful Bitcoin is. Jack finds out about the project. We're talking, we're talking about uh, Jack Dorsey, finds out about the project, likes what they're doing, sends them 14 Bitcoin. <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? Okay, let's dive into the story. It was a million, million dollar grant, was it? Or in Bitcoin? Well, I mean, uh, it was actually, in terms of USD, I believe it's a quarter of a million dollars. But oh. that's just at the current USD anyway, valuation. Maybe. I swear I, th I saw the number million chucked around somewhere, but maybe, maybe uh, it was to maybe it was to a few different things. I'm just saying maybe it's the current valuation, right? Because it is 16.8 thousand on for the fiat exchange. All right, so so here we go. Right, Jack Dorsey provides 14 Bitcoin grant to open source distributed communication protocol Nostra with goal of censorship resistant Twitter replacement. I like that because as of right now, the only thing that's been shilled to us is Mastodon. And I gotta tell you, if you thought but Twitter I, was a, if you thought Twitter was an echo chamber, Mastodon is like a circle jerk and an echo chamber multiplied by ten. But so. isn't it important <laughs> to know, Phil, that that Twitter is a platform, whereas Nostra is a protocol? Yeah, that is a very good point. Very good point. Which means and anybody can build clients on this thing. We're gonna we'll do a deep we're gonna do a deep dive into peer-to-peer uh, -peer social networks soon. We're gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna to talk to William. We're gonna we're gonna sort something out. We'll we'll do a pleb underground special on uh on on peer to peer social networks soon. Yeah, that'd be nice to uh, that'd be nice to get him here to talk about this. Okay, so let's just uh, let's continue on with this story here because we've got other stuff. To, I mean, we have massive fails to go through. This week was incredibly rough. Uh, anyways, all right, here we go. Noster aims to be the simplest open protocol that is able to create censorship-resistant global social network once and for all. It doesn't rely on any trusted central server, hence it is resilient. It is based on cryptographic keys and signatures, so it is tamper-proof. It does not rely on P2P techniques, therefore it works. Everybody runs a client. It can be a native client, a web client. To publish something, you write a post, sign it with your key, send it with multiple keys. To get updates from other people, you ask multiple relays if they know anything about those other people. Anyone can run a relay. A relay is a very simple, sorry, a relay is very simple and dumb. It does nothing besides accepting posts from some people and forwarding to others. Relays don't have to be trusted. Signatures are verified on the client side. You know, I, I got to tell you guys, um, I got to tell you guys, I'm really impressed that he was able to do this without a shit coin because the, the shit coiners would have you believe that in order to build something, you need a token. And and there he is just and and it's interesting because he even got funded without a shit coin. I mean, so so am I I look, you just call me t tell me that I'm nuts, but it sounds to me like he built something that has a valid use case that people would use and would find value in it and so they're willing to put money towards it so that he can build it, so that they can build it. It's not just him, it's quite a few Bitcoin contributors so that they can build it. Is that what happened here? Yeah, he he did the opposite of Moxie, huh? And it's working. I 
I, I'm just, uh, you know, I just, it's the, the, the shit coiner narrative just has me totally spun because I have just, you know, from what I've seen, you, you just, you absolutely need to have some stupid NFT or some useless token. And here he is building a protocol without it. Cause that guy's a boss, Damn. man. That's Damn. awesome, bro. I think, <laughs> and I think before the grant, like he didn't have, it wasn't, you know, wasn't selling some shit coin was doing it essentially unfunded. And then, and then later, yeah, gets, gets some funding. Um, you know, obviously not. You know, it's a luck. Not everyone has the, you know, the luxury to be able to do that to 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 work for for some unknown payment in the future. Um, but still, um, yeah, a, a, a great effort, and I guess yeah, and in line with it with what Satoshi uh, did. Um, so yeah, certainly in, in the in the spirit of Bitcoin. Speaking yeah, of totally Satoshi, right. oh sorry, go ahead, Flacco. Yeah, I was gonna say, I was gonna say, like you know, like. Uh... The guy he built something of value. Somebody saw it, throw him money, like a, an anonymous fucking VC fund kind of thing, right? It's like, why you need to raise a shit coin? Go fucking pitch uh, your garbage to fucking like you know some asshole in fucking Silicon Valley and have some type of backdoor deal where you know everybody gets dumped on at the end. Put your shit out on open source, right? I'm pretty sure it's on like GitHub or something. I'm pretty sure of that, right? That's I'm not right. Hundred percent fucking techie, right? But I'm pretty sure I got listed on GitHub. These guys, they go on GitHub, they go see shit of value. The guy saw it and he fucking threw him money, man. That's how the world should work. Maybe there was some type of pitch involved. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But if, if his value is there, the guy deserves the money, man. End of story. Doesn't need to fucking do nothing crazy. No, none of that shit, right? In my opinion, that's great. Different. It's great. Absolutely. And and just to and just to clear up some of what you were saying, absolutely, it is on GitHub. Uh, the link is going to be in the show notes to that story. And No BS Bitcoin did a fantastic job giving a great summary. And on their link, uh, the, on their page, there's links to all the resources uh, for not for Noster for the Noster protocol. Um, nice. And yeah, I, I just you know I see stuff like this, and when I hear all the noise, right, the garbage that's going on with people like Senator Warren, and you know, like everybody, you know, these people are trying to attack Bitcoin from every angle that they possibly can. This is the type of news that, yeah, I consider I consider hopium, I consider it bullish because in the end, this this is what you cut through all the noise to see that something like this is something like this is happening, and people yeah. are taking it very seriously, and. Just to to finish uh, at least to to finish up my um, uh, what I wanted to talk about on the hopium, the BIS uh, said that if I'm not mistaken, banks are allowed to hold up to two percent of their reserves in Bitcoin. Central banks are allowed to hold up to two percent in in uh, of the reserves in Bitcoin. This is bro, they got ten. Huh? They got ten percent in Bitcoin, bro. This is fucking bullshit. You're telling me banks don't hold Bitcoin? They guarantee have like half of their money, like. Not even half, maybe not half, but a good portion of it and just releasing, yeah, let's put some hopium out there, 2%, but I guarantee you fucking banks are holding 10%, 15%. You're just not telling nobody. Easy. He said central banks, though. I think central banks, um, there's certainly would be a lot of political, um, what's the word? It really doesn't look good if central banks hold Bitcoin. It, it says it says really bad things about their, their own yeah. currency. Yeah. Take a look. <laughs> Bank of International finalizes... Uh, finalizes policy to let banks hold 2% of reserves in Bitcoin. So they're kind of being vague there a little bit. But to your point, Walton, that's not very... That that doesn't say much about the quality of the money they're creating. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. All right. You guys, uh, do you guys have anything for uh, anything else for this piece? Yeah, Bitcoin's not backed by anything because um, it, it, it is an asset without, without liability. Uh, thank you. Thanks to proof of work. Um, if you don't understand what I just said, um, go do some reading. Gigi's a good place to start. Totally. Very good point. And also, you're fucking crazy if you don't have any Bitcoin at all. At this point, you got to be fucked. Like, whatever. Hold it. That's it. Oh, that's awesome. Absolutely. Or you can have fun staying poor. Like, yeah, th that's true. You know, there's, there's, that, choice. yeah. there's choices here. It's completely voluntary, uh, the choice to have fun staying poor. Um, it, I don't think it's going to be very fun, though, with all the bugs and stuff like pods, metaverse. Um, no, yeah. No Pros. coiners look very happy. Peter Schiff, Peter Schiff spends all day crying about Bitcoin. He looks thrilled. <laughs> he looks thrilled with his shiny rocks. Okay. Anyways, guys, we are moving on over to our newly named, our newly renamed segment, Wrecked.
Up next is Wrecked, sponsored by Crypto Cloaks. Crypto Cloaks make a whole range of Bitcoin goodies, like the wonderful Honey Badger here with the secret secret drawer, secret compartment where you can keep your FUD dice or maybe a signing device. Up next, we see the Hodlanaut helmet. Um, if you purchase this particular item, you contribute in the, the fight against evil, uh, defendingbtc.com. Uh, is another place you can find out more about that uh, but um yeah head over to cryptocloaks.com or cryptocloaks.eu and use the code pleb dash underground to get no just pleb underground thank you phil pleb underground to get five percent off all the bitcoin goodies that's cryptocloaks.com or cryptocloaks.eu okay Okay, so first on Rex, we're just going to do a quick wrap on, on what's been going on with uh, SBF and FTX um, in uh, the last week or so. Um, a tweet here from, from Ben Hunt, Epsilon Theory, um, referencing um, a, a very notable fraud case um, a number of years ago uh, with the US government uh, required every recipient of Madoff funds, including noted foundations and endowments, to return the money. Sorry, all you politicians and foundations and media orgs that took Bankman Freed's money. You're no different. Give it back now. Um, and it, it, it's well known that SBF was the second largest uh, Democrat donor and that he donated significantly to Republicans. Um, and so there's there's quite a lot of, uh, you know, fun, uh, illegal, you know, laund laundered money, stolen money out there um that that is you know that shouldn't be right and and what's going on are these people returning it uh tweet here from uh judd i think it's legum uh he said they contacted 98 campaigns and 24 uh political action committees that received money from spf ftx and ftx execs uh, and so that's what 100 122 groups in general uh, and 25 in total said they're going to return the money at this point in time. Guys, what do we think about this? Fuck this guy, man. Seriously, like, forget him. Like, this fucking exchange, worst thing ever, right? The guy didn't pay nobody. Hey, bro, it's like, it's like regular fucking bank story shit, regular politician stuff. We see it all the time. Nothing new. Everybody just got rug pulled. I got fucking rug pulled. Fuck this guy, man. You know, like... Uh, that's it. That's all I got to say. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, look, to, to your point, right? I, I think that, okay, so you've seen some of the stories, right? I actually did a clip uh, last week about his, um, uh, what is it? His, I believe it was his regulator, the uh, the person that was on his staff. Um, so, I mean, this is the FTC guy. Probably. Yeah, I mean, I'm totally forgetting yeah. what his name is, but um, essentially I, Ian Freeman or something, or Ron Freeman. I don't know. Anyways, but the point is, is that this guy who was supposed to be handling the regulators uh, and who's a regulator himself, if I'm not mistaken, he had a shady past. So th there's a lot of really weird stuff that is going on with SBF and FTX. Um, there's a lot of hands in the cookie jar. There's. You know, it's really strange that that he got arrested right before he was supposed to testify before the House, right? Maybe he was going to say something. Right, and there's some cookies being handed out too, right? I think Caroline, uh, here reported by Joe Consorti, though not named, uh, receiving more than $20 million from the, the SEC. Um, it's, that's quite that's quite a good good little deal um, there for, for Caroline. I don't know what's going on, man. I, I sometimes sometimes I think that the reason why we see this is so that it prepares everyone for the worst scams that are on the way. You know, because it kind of like lays the groundwork. I, I mean, it was very strange that after this all happened, he started going on these social media tours and, you know, and all of this yeah, I mean, stuff. We, like, it was we just all very strange. It was just weird, you know, like, it, it, and, and not only that, but Kevin O'Leary, like standing up for him, like, dude, I understand you're totally freaking wrecked from this guy. And I understand maybe that it's embarrassing. Why. Sorry. Maybe, maybe, maybe this, maybe this is one reason why um, he, he couldn't stop kind of 
oh. doing all of these things is that uh, he told the judge he needs 10 milligrams of Adderall every four hours, which apparently is a quite a lot of uh, speed, basically. Um, the, the, yeah, uh, no, no wonder he's constantly seeking uh, s- stimulation um, if, if he's, yeah, jacked up. This is just awful. And man, this guy's crazy, bro. This guy's crazy, it, man. It's a like, train wreck. Thing, but I'm kind thing, of enjoying watching it a little bit. Yeah, man. But I think the whole thing was kind of staged, for sure. Um, I had a doubt that he's staying in like a, a jail cell where he has to clean his own piss and stuff. Like it's, that's what everybody's It's funny you say that. It's funny you say that because we talk about, oh, maybe, maybe he's a spook, right? And actually, uh, someone who, who I think probably is a spook, Peter Thiel, um, was apparently the largest investor uh, yeah. in, in BlockFi. Um, but then, of course, they were the primary feeder fund for FTX. Um, so Thiel, Thiel, in part, got wrecked uh, through this. Peter Thiel, um, for those of you who don't know, um, ha- has a company called Palantir Technologies, which I believe um, is is the largest private... Um, d- uh, uh, What's the best way to look at this? It's a, it seems to be essentially a private arm of of U.S. military and intelligence. Um, um, it's a yeah, very very large company that seems to be losing money, uh, and its primary customers are are U.S. Um, yeah, U.S. military and, and intelligence. Um, yeah, because yeah. most of them is probably like just government funded, right? Like it's just a subsidiary. It's like a company that just collect subsidies and it's like a zombie fucking corporation there's a bunch of these man in in all over the world man in canada fucking america everywhere man you know it's just taxpayer funded does not uh give any value to fucking citizens just uh continuous fucking you know government spending more taxes more everything and it's the only thing it's gonna do companies like this like military companies i'm assuming there's working on some type of like you know surveillance even more that than what there already is right I wouldn't be surprised, man. I don't know. Fuck him. Yeah, and like not only that, but you don't hear much about Palantir, but they specialize specifically in big data analytics, surveillance type stuff. Like yeah, exactly. bingo, right? right? Absolutely. Like it's yeah, yeah. They're, yeah. They're, so you know, you never hear a peep out of them, right? <laughs> but yeah, but then it's not just them, right? It, no, no, it is. Many, isn't. many it's people just one don't piece. know. Amazon, Amazon have a company called or a te- service called Recognition with a K um, that that do some similar sort of stuff, surveillance, um, you know, essentially, uh, or, or kind of you know software where it's oh if you throw a load of video data at it, they can they can it can link kind of people together that sort of stuff, um, and of course Amazon are the ones who bought Ring doorbells um, mm-hmm. and and then are, you know putting that giving that data to law enforcement all these sort of things. So there's you know they're they're selling um, yeah the, uh, all these big tech companies are up to no good um, in some way shape or form because essentially they cuck for the government buck. It is it is what it is now. This this SBF FTX drama um, is at least producing some rather excellent memes, and I have I have one one for you one for you here, Curti of uh, GG sharing it, uh, saying that the internet remains undefeated. Um, oh, you're gonna have to turn on the sound. Hey, fucker, we in the Bahamas, and guess who the fuck this is? Sam Bankman Fried is the asshole who stole all your crypto, and I fucking found him. I get slippy slippy in the grippy all night. This fuck Watt had the biggest exchange in the world and he fucked it up. The why? Well, um, first of all, fuck you. I really did waste $370 to find this fat fucking nerd in the Bahamas. I wanted to get super rich because bitches love money and I love bitches. He used Reddit to find the ultra grippy. Then he saw Caroline's ass line in her DMs. I was hitting it from the back. She starts calling me Chunk Daddy. Got her singing like Michael Jackson. Left ass cheek was cramping I was about to tap the fuck out but once she gave the slippy sippy grippy from Mississippi she vanquished my nut. And she even brought the cucumber like I asked. So you fucked over almost a million people for the grill grippy. Fuck yeah. The internet remains undefeated. Yeah, the internet truly does remain undefeated. That is... I have to say, you know, NFTs may not be art, but that is art. (laughs) Totally, man. That's fucking hilarious. (laughs) Okay, oh now gosh! Just one one final thought on the SBF FTX. Um, a tweet from Jack Mallers uh, referencing a, a an interview that he had um 
about oh, yeah. this a few months ago that never got publicly released by Business Insider. Um, why? D did Business Insider ever get paid by FTX or SBF? Um, I don't think this has been responded to yet. Um, I guess I guess we'll wait we'll wait and see. Um, but yeah, this is this is certainly the 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 part that we all need to be wary of is the 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 media has a huge problem um because the incentive structure is broken um and so you got to be really careful about about what uh media sources you're you're trusting um some people say that if you if you don't read the news um then you are uninformed but if you do read it that you are misinformed so please please be careful um you, you you're probably I, mean, I think we all are you know believing believing things that aren't true um and not believing things that may be true there's it's very difficult to to find the truth the only truth that you really know is is that which you verify on your own node at home right yeah very well said yeah. oh go ahead go ahead 10x no no i was i was, I was just agreeing yeah man totally uh 100 agree with walton on that the only truth and nothing but the truth is every day that you wake up, you put your two feet on the ground, thankful for fucking living another day, and you grind, you hustle, you do whatever you got to do, whatever makes you happy, and that's the only truth that you got to know. Nothing more than that, you know, in my opinion, anyway, right? Just no, you're be thankful for your right. life. Be thankful for your life, man. That's it. You know, presence is key, right? Not yeah. enough of us are present. So I, I think you make a very good point. Um, Okay. But so oh go ahead. The, the next story, yeah, we need to have a little look at uh in rec this week. Um is is well which which shitcoin exchange is is going to blow up next? I think it's Binance. Uh let's have a little look why. Not next. Okay. Oh. So, I mean, I mean the, the, they all are. They all are. But anyway, <laughs> They're all yeah. going. Um, let's let's have a look so justin sun to the to the rescue uh, of course 100 wait, 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 million us dollars into binance uh yeah you you know things are good when justin sun and his monkey face is is coming to help uh uh but what what's going on uh net net flows out of binance seem to nope. be uh, quite large uh with uh, almost four billion dollars um over the last week and that was up to a couple of days ago um so i mean this is quite a lot apparently um apparently sees it was bad enough that cz had to go on uh on the television uh and and talk to a reporter so let's have a little look at this um yeah uh interview uh with uh, Binance Big Boss CZ. The clip from CZ. We want to be transparent. We want to set the golden standard for reliability, solidness in this so space. Do so do it. Would you be able to dollars. handle it if somebody asked you for $2.1 billion back? Would that be okay? Would you be able to still withstand things? We're financially okay. Including you have $2.1 billion to give away if somebody came to, reclaw, to claw that back, you'd we're, still be fine? We'll, we'll let the lawyer handle it. Our fin we are financially <laughs> Okay, so for me, that that's that's where I'm gonna rug that. Like, if, <laughs> can you imagine? So I think I actually saw a tweet. I think it was from Shire Hoddle. I'm not gonna share it, but he it was something like his his wife goes, uh, no, no, sorry, that's it. His wife says, uh, "Have you been cheating?" He's like, uh, "We'll we'll let we'll let uh, you, we'll let the lawyers handle that." It's like you, that's not a very convincing thing to say, is it? Like, uh, yeah, we're 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 good, but I talked to my lawyer. Like, come on, dude one of my one of my best friends who has who started his journey in bitcoin with me 5 years ago 6 years ago who never stopped being a shitcoiner i sent him the link to that video okay sent him the link to that video and he finally pulled everything he finally pulled yeah he dumped all of his shitcoins and he freaking moved his btc to his hardware wallet that he hadn't set up yet that had just been sitting there for like a year okay so there you go. That video right there. He was like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> Packing it up. So it just goes to show you, right, what 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 those people say. It's what they don't say that really matters because he did not answer that question. And that was not inspiring. Like I did not get the warm and fuzzies from CZ that my that that my funds would be safe <laughs> at all. Yeah, man, totally, man. Fucking Binance. If that shit goes bust, forget it. It's over. Like. 
the ecosystem is going to fucking implode. It's going to rebuild. Bitcoin's going to survive, but everything is going to fucking get wiped. I think, anyway. I mean, so, it's, so the I think final, you make a good point. The final piece of evidence, and I think the most compelling piece of evidence as to why you should pull your coins, I mean, you should have done it a long time ago, but why you should pull your coins off Binance now, now, like literally this second, um, is, is this, this last link that I, I will share. Um, I, I screenshotted a, a conversation between a, the mighty Jim Cramer and, and Binance. Jim oh, saying, do you feel as reassured by Binance as I do? CZ saying, oh, Jim, please don't use Binance for the sake of everyone else. Half joking. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, yeah. If you can't afford for uh, Jim Cramer to feel confident in you, that then you're not a good business. Quite pure and simple. Um, if you can't take um, the, the inverse Kramer bash, um, yeah, you, you're you're a business that's destined to fail. Okay, I I love that you brought Jim Kramer up. Uh, I mean, look, coming from a background where I'm a, an amateur, you know, stock investor uh, before I ever found Bitcoin, I can tell you, Jim Kramer has just wrecked so many people. It's it's not even funny. So I got to tell you, when you get an endorsement from Jim Cramer, you should freaking run, okay? And I will just cite this one example, Sears Holding Company, okay? Jim Cramer was, and there's people sitting there watching this right now that are so young, they're like, what the hell is Sears? Exactly, okay? Jim Cramer was telling people that that was going to be the next Berkshire Hathaway, right? Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger. Bitcoin is rat poison. Guy who's a multi-billionaire, right? Worth like $243 billion. So he was saying that Sears Holding Company was going to be the next Berkshire Hathaway. As it progressed to go from approximately $200 a share down to absolutely nothing and into bankruptcy, okay? He wrecked a whole bunch of mom and pops that listened to him. And that's just, that, that's not even, that's just one of his terrible calls. He did the same thing with MasterCard and Visa. He, he, he warned people away from the biggest monetary networks that humanity had ever seen, okay? Citing debt problems, like this guy, uh, but of course, right, he cheered them all to come back once the price was 10X. You know, so th th this guy is a tool from Wall Street. He's a tool from Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan. He's just a puppet. And you know what? I, I, I honestly believe word, that he's Phil. just paid to wreck people. Right, He's he's paid to put out the the opposite of what wall street want to trade yeah. probably right i mean he got paid on was it or to 15, buy their bags 15 million from ftx yeah no he what just did he, he's a huge disappointment oh sorry go ahead 10x what, the, what does this guy even do he has a tv show and he shows fucking stocks bro go yeah on. he yeah exactly he used to do a show he i, I mean he used to have sorry, a, a show jim kramer I apologies. I, I misspoke there. I, I I confused Kevin O'Leary with 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 Jim Cramer for a moment. Like all these guys are clowns on TV, right? But sorry, yeah. Uh, Kevin O'Leary was the guy that got paid fifty million by FTX. Jim Cramer, uh, the the guy that's gonna help bring down Binance. Well, you, you know what? Uh, it's good that you made that correction. And and don't get me wrong, but Jim Cramer also started calling him, you know. Um, the Harriman, you know, or is he the, you know, the JP Morgan of crypto and stuff like that? So, so look, Kramer is not, uh, unfortunately, his type is not innocent in all of this. Okay. He sat yeah. there and he hyped this crap up. So maybe he didn't get paid, but he got paid. <laughs> Phil, I don't know if you remember, like, what was it? Like, like a couple last bull run, man, like 2017. Remember they were buying fucking Ripple on the TV? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Buy yes. the two dollars. Uh, buy the two bucks. It's good for you, bro. What the fuck? At like two bucks. About? Yeah. Exactly. Right. Never went back. Because yeah, they can't do math. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, so. It's just insane. no. It's so true. Shit coiners can't do math. Like seriously. <laughs> Look, basic math, and trust me, I am no math expert. The people that know me out there, they know that I'm not good at math. But like, this is basic math. Hey, this is basic multiplication and shit. Yeah. So if I'm figuring this out, you're in trouble. Or you're not trying. Or both, or one of the two. I don't know. So the final story in Wrecked today um, is, of course, um, the, the, simply the very best president uh, there's ever been, um, even if he does say so himself, 
um, bigly. Um, uh, and that is, of course, Mr. Donald Trump, um, who has decided to uh, join the shitcoin game uh, and become an NF tard. Let's have a little look what he's been up to. We are an apolitical show. Just putting that out there. Yeah, fuck all of them. Hello, everyone. This is Donald Trump. Hopefully your favorite president of all time, better than Lincoln, better than Washington, <laughs> with an important announcement to make. I'm doing my first official Donald J. Trump NFT collection right here and right now. They're called Trump Digital Trading Cards. These cards feature some of the really incredible artwork pertaining to my life and my career. It's been very exciting. Been very you can exciting. collect your Trump digital cards just like a baseball card or other collectibles. Here's one of the best parts. Each card comes with an automatic chance to win amazing prizes like dinner with me. I don't know if that's an amazing prize, but it's what we yeah yeah it's like it's it's the most trump thing you've ever seen like i i, I find the guy quite entertaining but like it, yeah. yeah come like what a complete shit show like come oh on God. this if i and i i feel like this is this is this there's, there is a bit of a there's a bit of a division about thoughts about whether whether nfts can ever be um sold in a genuine manner um I, I i'm largely of the opinion that that they can't um if, if you want to kind of donate to an artist or you want to contribute to an artist's work i think there's other better ways of doing it um um but but the, i think yeah the bitcoin community should we say is is quite divided on this crypto graffiti certainly is a is a, is a fan of of nfts i I'll, I'll personally prefer to kind of keep buying physical art like his own um but um certainly um the the concept of digital collectibles is what is being sold to um, a whole bunch of famous people um by i imagine you know all these kind of advertising type agencies digital agencies because it is a relatively low cost um item that they can essentially sell to these people as a new merchandising arm um and th this is yeah this is something i think bitcoiners maybe need to be need to be aware of like there is there there are market forces there are there are you know certain these agencies etc who, who are trying to make money for for their clients in a in a in a bunch of different ways um and they're going to try and sell them things they don't really i'm not gonna lie these advertising type people they don't really care about morals all that much they're certainly not gonna care if it's on a shitcoin thing so i i don't know i don't I'm I'm in two minds about saying this but may maybe some some bitcoin nft type people need to kind of start wading into that market um because otherwise a whole bunch of celebrities are going to be issuing their nfts um on 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 yeah a whole bunch of shit coinery um what do you guys think um well i'll tell you what man i love donald trump he's fucking hilarious bro that's the best thing i've ever seen honestly like uh fucking for for him like he's like it reminds me of this thing that he did but Buy Trump steaks, the best steak on the fucking planet Earth. Buy my cards, the best fucking thing on planet Earth. He's just a natural salesman, and I fucking love him for that. But, I mean, it's garbage, right? But another thing that I think, right, is that politicians and celebrities and all that garbage, right, that there's a reason why they're shilling uh, NFTs and, like, shit coins and, like, these staking coins or whatever, right? But mostly NFTs for right now is because maybe uh, it's to legitimize depending the chain that it's running on or like if it's on the Ethereum fucking chain or it's on the Tron chain for NFTs or if it's on whatever chain for NFTs, right? To maybe just give people more confidence that, oh, Ethereum's safe or a, like it's like as if like as if it could never collapse, but it probably can. Like, I mean, we all know it can, but is it ever going to fucking collapse, bro? Like not for anything, fucking Herbalife has been running for 50 years as the biggest Ponzi on the planet Earth. Does it mean that and same thing with Ethereum? It could fucking definitely run fucking 50 years, but we all know I thought Ethereum was the biggest Ponzi on the planet, or is it the US dollar? Uh, I forget, but the, the, 
you got to try to say it all. You do bring up a, a good point, which is that yes, these these you know these agencies or whatever are, are, are trying to kind of make revenue for their for their celebrities, but they're also affinity scamming them, or these shit coiners are affinity scamming them. You certainly saw that you know with with people like Brady and you know with the with the FTX stuff, but you see it yeah all all over the place. Um, I, I think um, unfortunately um there are there are a whole bunch of famous people that aren't necessarily that smart that just take the seemingly free money and don't really think about the consequences of what of what they're actually endorsing by doing so it's i mean it's not really surprising right that that donald trump went this route um that that that's the first part of it i i think to flacco's point about legitimizing these shit chains that that's exactly what happens, you know, talking about these celebrities endorsing NFTs as of right now, there's like three or four uh, celebrities that are being uh, pursued because they did not disclose um, their involvement with certain NFT collections as they shield them. Uh, people like Paris Hilton, Madonna, Jimmy Fallon. So, you know, I mean, look. Um, I think Serena Williams got done for, for Serena for Williams her, as so well. With, was it a re three and max or whatever it's called? Yep, that's right. That, that that's right. And and I mean, look, you know, at the end of you know, again, these people, sure, they can claim ignorance, right? That they don't know any better. But look, if they didn't do any research into it, they didn't realize they were shilling a scam or anything like that. That's not an excuse because at this point, at this point, we have enough evidence that NFTs are a scam. Okay, like we we already have enough evidence. Everybody already knows that you're paying for a a hash. You're literally paying for a URL. You don't own that JPEG. So yeah, and, and they're they're a scam. The even point if of it. They, even even if they are sons NFTs, and you wrote a, and you helped to write a, a book about. It 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 depends what part of the circle jerk you're you, you're from, Walton. You know, I mean, it's it just depends. You know, some. <laughs> yeah, totally, man. Like, you know, like, just for example, what's that fucking coin that went down like a 10 times this year? Solana? How the fuck are you still in the top 10? You tell me. How? Explain to me they that. They made a phone. There is no top 10. There is only one. Yeah, obviously, for sure. But tell me how it's not zero. Tell me that. That's because these people are fucking delusional and they keep shilling this garbage, right? So... Look. If you think there's a top 10, it means you're not using time chain stats and you're using some sort of shitcoin site. So stop fucking around. All right, all right. Yeah, anyway, th this this was wrecked. So um, thanks, guys. Um, Fantastic. Yeah. Very good coverage. Very good coverage, man. I, I like that. We went all around. We went full circle. So so look, before we uh, th before we wrap up the show, let's uh, let's have a quick chat with with our guest Wolfnode, also known as Flacco. And the reason why I keep saying his old name is for the Bitcoiners that were around when I started that would maybe know him by by Wolfnode. So man, tell us you uh, you're a Bitcoiner, but tell us what is yeah. it uh, what is it that you do, my dude? Uh, well, I run a digital agency. Me and my buddies. Right. So we started, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so we started this, uh, about a year ago. Okay. But I've been doing this for like about 10 years. Right. So I've been doing about like Google algorithms and all that shit for a very long time. And this last year was the year that I said, with well, my buddy, we're like, okay, listen, we're fucking fucking around. We're building websites all the time. Let's just do it for a business. Right. And it's working pretty well. I mean, like my job is, you know, pretty much like get clients, these guys, they build fantastic websites. Me and my friends in the back, right? They're very technical, a lot more technical than me, right? I know the basics of building a website and all that stuff, but I know that SEO and uh, brand guides and building your yourself as a as a brand online is very important in this day and age, right? So what I do is I pretty much make sure that you as a company or you as a person get clients or is visualize how you portray yourself to be online, right? So if you're looking for clients, I can help you. If you want to look a certain way, you want to build a certain brand, I can help you with that. You want a website, I can help you with that. You want to have local SEO, I can help you with that. You want me to do social media content for you, custom images, all that stuff. This is what I do, right? I make sure that your time is saved and you don't have to fucking waste zero time on that whatsoever because this is very time consuming. And I'm pretty sure like business owners and stuff like that, well, clients that I know, right? They have no time to do this. These guys are running around meeting to meeting, like on the fucking street, at the construction site, on a roof or whatever, right? They have no time to go and post 
a nice post about themselves or tell people about themselves or actually go and do the work and register themselves at a hundred different fucking directories. I do all of that. I just make sure that you maximize your time where it's placed and I take care of everything else for you to make sure that you get clients and you always stay busy and relevant online. That's pretty much what I do. I love it. I absolutely yeah. love it. So we're going to put a link uh, to your uh, to your site in the uh, in the show notes. But could you tell the uh, the viewers where they can find you? Yeah, my uh, my agency is called Zero Four One Agency. So zero four one agency dot com. Um, you could call me. You could show. You could you could hit me up on Twitter. By the way, I do give uh, discounts for Bitcoiners. You want to pay me in Bitcoin? I give it to you for ten percent off. All right, whatever nice. you want. All right, I hook you up. Right, I mean, whatever you want to do. Right, I'll give you ten percent off, and uh, you know, because you're a Bitcoin is pro, we fan dog. So I mean, that's it. You know, and uh, I'll, I'll, you can hit me up on Twitter. My my name is Ten X Flock on Twitter. Uh, I do get banned a lot, so whatever. You can also <laughs> you can also look me up on Telegram and stuff. But uh, yeah, you could actually you know what on te on Telegram you could see you could find me inside the. Uh, You'll find me inside the Bitcoin Revolution uh, channel. These guys are my boys. I love the entire group. They're like family to me. Um, and yeah, God bless everybody. That is an awesome group. And uh, man, again, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Guys, that was our show this week. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to check us out on our audio-only platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor, if you want to stream us sats, check us out on fountain.fm. You could stream us sats through Breeze. Thank you so much to all of our viewers and listeners who stream us sats. We really appreciate it. We will catch you all next time. Walton. Fuck shit coins. Ah, thank you. Peace out, guys.